Okay, it's assembly time. I'm so nervous and excited. <laughs> 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 like a little bit of spicy. Flour, buttermilk, panko. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Hey guys, it's Carla. I am here again in my kitchen and today I'm going to make a crispy fish sandwich with a special, very special tartar sauce. It all happens in a cast iron skillet. You will never worry about cooking fish again, period. <laughs> it's a true story. So I've been on a cast iron journey for a little while now, kind of coming up with all of the ways that cast iron skillets can be used, all of the service that they can deliver unto you. And there's so many ways that they sear, that they roast, that they bake even. But this episode is dedicated to pan frying in a cast iron skillet, which is just one of the great ways to use it. Once it gets up to temperature, it holds temperature. They're very generously sized. They have these nice high walls for holding any oil that you put into them, any splattering and scattering that is going on. While this is a fantastic way to cook fish, I also am very aware and very appreciative of all the plant-based people out there. So I will also, in addition to some fish fillets, I will show you how to do this with a tofu fillet. Over here, you see I have some beautiful flounder. Over here, I have some tofu, firm tofu that I've already sliced, and it is being pressed upon, which is really doing it um, a service. To make tofu crispy, just pressing out the excess liquid that it holds within itself. Why is this tartar more special than other tartars? It has some of my favorite things, including buttermilk, pickles, and seaweed. What more could you ask for? Before we get into the fish, the tofu is gonna hang out. I'm gonna concentrate on the tartar. So fish go away. First up, a cup of sour cream. If you don't have sour cream, you could use plain yogurt. Creme fraiche. You could use a plant-based yogurt, but I'm using sour cream because it's tangy and because it's really creamy. Then I need a quarter cup of buttermilk. I always have buttermilk in the house. It is also tangy. It is lowish fat as compared to regular milk. Um, and it's just really, really great in creamy sauces. So like onion dips, great in ranch dressings, in pancakes, and it kind of never goes bad. So investing in some buttermilk is a really um, great idea. You can keep it parked in the back of your fridge and it will hang out. Quarter cup of mayonnaise. All right, so that's our foundation. Now we need salty, crunchy, sour things. First up, these are papara peppers. They're a little green Spanish pepper. They're not super spicy. A pepperoncino would work instead. Banana peppers, just green pepper rings are great. Just a spicy pickled pepper. So I'm just gonna cut these. They have brine in them and I want whatever juices come out of it, I wanna get into the sauce too. That's really good. Woo! They're bitter and spicy. Oh. And sour. <laughs> oh, <so electric. laughs> um, look, man, there's a lot of creamy stuff you got to cut through. <laughs> and that's what that pepper is doing. Texture and dun, 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 dun. you need that. Another kind of um, pickle, the cornichon. You could use a regular dill pickle, half sour, full sour, just a crunchy pickle. Two tablespoons of capers. I like the salt packed capers because they tend to be a little bit bigger and I just like they're kind of that dry, meaty texture. If a store had both, I would buy these. If they didn't, the other ones are gonna be totally fine. But drain them. I want the creaminess, saltiness, brininess. If I didn't add all these pickled things, it would just be a bowl of thinned out sour cream, which is you know, not bad, but this is gonna be better. All right, next up, onion powder. If you don't have onion powder, you can use garlic powder, or you could omit it. Salt and pepper, and then furikake. Delicious pairing. So normally this is really traditionally and typically put over rice as a rice seasoning, but the sesame seeds and the nori go with the 
fish flavor. They also go with this kind of oniony, creamy vibe. And so I tried it and it was delicious. So that's what makes this tartar super special. Three tablespoons. If you didn't find furikake in the stores that you are shopping in, you could also just use toasted sesame seeds or you could buy the little seaweed snacks and cut them up into little pieces with a pair of shears and that would be a pretty close approximation. There is usually salt in them too, so just add a little bit extra salt. A little bit of green chili sauce. You can use any kind of hot sauce, but I like a little bit of spicy. If you don't like spicy, leave this out. Just a little other also pickled vinegary flavor that also has spice. So now it's got ocean vibes because of the seaweed. Mm. I just think it's delicious. Even if you're not in it for any of the other stuff that's coming after this, this is a great crudite dip. The other thing that the furikage is giving is awesome, awesome texture because it's got the crunchy um, sesame seeds and the nori flake. So it's really, it's delivering a lot as a condiment. All right, that's done. Tartar sauce is gonna go in the fridge and I'm gonna get set up to do the dredging and the frying. The fish I'm using today is flounder. I like flounder because the fillets are relatively thin, but it's a nice firm um, fish that has like a great um, texture. It's not gonna totally flake and fall apart. If you can't find flounder, a skinless red snapper, black sea bass, a thin fillet of hake or cod. Porgy would work if you can get your hands on some porgy. This was a beautiful, pretty big fish. And so the fillets um, came, they're long, and this is basically two portions. So now I'm going to set up my dredging station for the fish, but also for the tofu. And I'm going to be using buttermilk, flour, and breadcrumbs. Often you see a three-step dredge, like for making a cutlet with flour, egg, and breadcrumb instead of the egg because I already had buttermilk in the very special tartar. I figured why not use buttermilk for coating the fish instead of eggs which appear nowhere else in the recipe and seem extraneous. So we're just getting double buttermilk power. Pie plates work great for this. Small rimmed um, baking sheets kind of like these work great for this. I have dinner plates that have a little bit of a lip and so that is what I often use. Flour, buttermilk, panko. Cup of flour, that's all purpose. If you have bread flour and you're out of all purpose, that's fine. If you have Wondro, which is the very fine flour, that is also fine. Probably gluten-free flour is also fine because all it's doing is providing like a dry place for the buttermilk to adhere. Three quarter cups buttermilk for the plate. Panko, AKA Japanese breadcrumbs. If you have fresh breadcrumbs that you made yourself, that is fantastic, please use them. Unseasoned, you know, regular old breadcrumbs, that is also fine. I like panko because it has this really great, big, deeply shaggy texture, and it just makes things come out really, really crispy. So we need a cup and a half, I'm a tiny bit shy. <laughs> Cup and a half. Salt and pepper. I'm gonna season the protein itself and then I'm gonna season it after it's cooked. Also a little bit of onion powder. It's just delicious. It adds another extra little bit of something. Exact same seasonings happening on the tofu. Also being aggressive because tofu has a flavor but it is mild. So I wanna amp it up. You wear gloves if you want. Not gonna do it. Here's the key things putting the fish into the flour, all of the sides, okay? And then you don't wanna go from here straight into the buttermilk with all these kind of thick and thin parts of the flour. Just pat that excess off. The, the kind of thin evenness of this is gonna to lead to thin evenness of everything that comes after. So it's just a light coating, but it's everywhere. Then buttermilk, dippy dips. I guess you could use nut milk if you're doing the vegetarian vegan thing. I don't see why not. This is just about a liquid adherence that is then a place for the breadcrumbs to stick. And then really packing the breadcrumbs on. So don't be afraid to like press down, 
go back and forth a couple times if you need to. That's it, bread it all over. And then onto that cooling rack. Now I have this situation and we just keep going. I need more breadcrumb. And that's why we keep the panko nearby and just make sure you have a little extra. So here's a true thing about this tofu. I've never breaded and fried tofu before. So if you're a vegetarian and you've done it, it and you know what I'm doing is wrong, thank you for coming on this journey with me. We love our plant-based people. So we're gonna have two fry stations, vegetarian fry and the fish fry. This one's 12 inches, this one is 10. I'm gonna do the tofu in here. The goal here, heating these up medium high. I'm gonna fry in peanut oil, which I love, but any vegetable oil, canola oil, avocado oil, safflower oil, any of those oils is going to work. Just a neutral oil that is not very expensive because you're gonna use like a cup of it. So the goal is to have about a quarter inch of oil in the bottom of the pan, nice and hot, fry, crispy, both sides. Bingo, bango, Bob's your uncle. My pan is hot. I can feel heat radiating off of it. That is how I know. I can see some smoke coming, which means that the oil that is part of the pan's patina has gotten hot enough to start smoking. I'm going to add my oil. What's a quarter inch? I don't know. It's an amount that I'm eyeballing. It's very clear to me that this oil is hot enough, but if you're not sure if your oil is hot enough, take a little piece of the breadcrumb and drop it into the hot oil. And if it starts bubbling, sizzling, and floating right away, you are good to go. The only thing to be careful about as you're putting food into the pan is not to splash it, right? Because you have a certain amount of depth. This is heavy. You don't want to splash hot oil on yourself. So gently placing or sliding in. Putting it down, going away from me. So if it did splash, it would splash that way. The tofu looks really, really great. I'm very pleased. One guy got a little bit darker than I would have liked, but we're, we're okay with that. Everybody is scooching freely and not sticking and getting really crispy and brown. The fish, same story. I see a lot of beautiful browning around the edges. I did a little shaky shaky of the pan just to make sure nobody was sticking. This is very forgiving if you've ever had a piece of fish that adhered itself to the pan and then you tried to turn it over and it stuck and then it ripped in half and that was a big bummer because fish isn't cheap. Um, that's not gonna happen here. And it's not cooking for long enough to ever dry out. So it's gonna be really tender and very like delicious and juicy, brown and crispy. It's no fail. The tofu is completely cooked. There's no, no part of me that is like, I have to make sure it's cooked through. It's hot, it's crispy, it's golden brown on both sides, it's coming out. Mmm. <laughs> and then the safest way to dispose of hot oil is to not dispose of hot oil. Turn the pan off, hot oil, let it cool down. Then you can dispose of it when it's cold oil. These guys also, look at Mighty Fine. So this fish is so thin that it's very fast cooking. And so again, those cues, like by the time the breadcrumb coating is nice and brown and golden brown, it was a very hot pan, they're cooked. Like I'm not at all in any part of me worried that they're not gonna be cooked in the center. Um, I could get a little more color. That guy seems done. Back with the furikake. I'm gonna use that as like a fish seasoning also. So it's in our delicious special tartar, but it's also a great little topper. Talking sandwich texture now. Hot and crispy and juicy. We have cold, fatty, creamy, and also crunchy. The thing that's really gonna take it home is going to be crunchy in a different way, in like a watery way. And what's colder and crunchier and waterier than iceberg lettuce, nothing. And I don't want shredded lettuce either, AKA shreddice, because when something hot hits shreddice, it turns into wettice <laughs> and it's gross. 
<laughs> and slimy. So I want uh, an iceberg slab cut crosswise into slabs. It's got a lot of texture going for it, but iceberg has never been known for an assertive flavor or anything like that. So yeah, everybody's seasoned buns, hon. These are nice soft like egg bun. Ideally, you would use something soft and squishy like uh, milk bread, Japanese milk bread would be totally amazing. Or another kind of soft roll like a Kaiser roll would also be fine. Or any kind of hoagie roll, hot dog bun. I don't care, do what you want. Okay, it's assembly time. <sighs> So nervous and excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is how I want this to go. Special tartar. Then you do a slab. Filet of fish. And more sauce on top. Oh hi. <laughs> oh hey. Hi, I love you. How are you doing? I love you too. A little bit of fish coming out the edge. Tell you what you're getting before you get it. You know what I mean? Why should everybody be hidden inside? That's it. Let's make the vegetarian one at the same time. <laughs> Just again, extremely excited. Hmm. Okay. Those are the sandwiches. They're both my children and I love them equally. But I'm gonna eat the fish guy first. Mmm! It has so much texture. The fish is perfectly cooked. It's flaky in the middle, tenderoni. It's a sandwich you can't, you can't stop and talk about it. You just have to keep eating it. Very happy with that. It's also great to be a vegetarian. Mmm! Mm-hmm, mm. Something that's really nice about the tofu is it has more textural contrast between the outside and the inside because it's a little bit thicker and it's like creamy but firm in there. So we use firm tofu and it pairs really, really well with the sesame and the nori and the everything else that's going on. So highly recommend both sandwiches. Pick your journey, pick your path. That's it. <laughs> Try it again. Bye. Listen guys, I had a great time making this video for you and I love being over here. The rest of the time when I'm not here, I'm on Patreon. If you like this video and you feel even like neutral about me, please support my work. Subscribing to me on Patreon makes it possible to, for me to make all of the videos all of the time, sometimes here, but mostly over there. So check it out.